Hello everyone and welcome to today's new video where we'll be looking at the last British heavy tank also known as the Conqueror or the FV214. Before we delve into further details of this impressive vehicle make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment if you want to support the channel. After World War II the British wanted to have a universal tank and this universal tank was supposed to be called the FV200. The idea was for the Svergel to have 22 different versions but it got more expensive and it came to a point in 1949 that they decided it was not worth it anymore and they stopped the project and this included also the FV201. In addition to it just getting expensive they realized that they already had a Svergel which was more than capable of being versatile which was the Centurion. But with the appearance of the IS-3 back in 1945 during the uh, Berlin Parade uh, the need for a heavy tank with a 122mm main armament was still there. So they started to create a tank with these certain specifications and by 1952 they had their first pilot model running and by 1955 20 of the Conqueror prototypes were being tested with the British Army of the Rhine. The Conqueror was produced 180 times and spent its entire career in the army as a potential tank destroyer due to its very powerful main armament. However, throughout its entire career, it seemed to be more of a burden than a help due to its mechanical and electrical malfunctions. Malfunctions include, but are not limited to, suspension failures, gear failures, and the engine was also prone to overheating. In addition to that, it was quite unpopular with their crews, and this is because, of course, when the tank breaks down quite a lot, you're not really gonna like the tank. Um, so after barely serving a decade in the army, it was removed from service. And after the Centurion got the 105mm main armament, the need for the Conqueror wasn't there anymore. According to the book Panzervoertuigen by Jack Livesley, at the time they thought that the Conqueror or tanks in general didn't have a place anymore on the battlefield, so they wanted to replace the Conqueror with a Humber Hornet Malarca, which is basically just a rocket launcher. This is a British Australian development Virgo, which never was very successful, and it also got replaced around the same time as the Conqueror did. The Conqueror was developed out of the FV201 prototype and the reason why they used the FV201 chassis is because it was almost done with development. In fact, every FV200 tank it was fitted had this chassis. In addition to that it was fitted with a very streamlined turret uh, and it had a main armament which was the L1 120mm which was derived from the American tank destroyer the T-34, which in turn was derived from the anti-tank gun. The APDS rounds from the 120mm was fully capable of frontally challenging the IS-3 at a distance of 900 meters, and beyond that they would use hash rounds. This is because originally the hash rounds were anti-structure rounds, but it was found that they do perform excellent against tanks as well. What this does is when it hits a tank, it basically creates spalling inside the tank, killing the entire crew. So there was a countermeasure to be made against this, and this was supposed to be spaced armor, which the uh, Conqueror was also outfitted with. And these rounds were fully capable, or at least fully seen to be capable of taking out a IS-3 heavy tank. And the reason why they do generally compare the uh, anti-tank rounds and the anti-tank guns to the IS-3's armor is because after the Second World War the IS-3 was the heaviest armored object or Virgil which was in the Russian arsenals. The Conqueror had a couple of new features which were quite new to tanks and these were the automatic gun rammer which was supposed to help the loader because these projectiles were quite heavy. Uh, it also had the shell ejection system and a fire control turret. The Conqueror, as expected for a heavy tank, was very well armored and its thickest point was 178mm thick. Its hull was 130mm thick, but effectively was 300mm thick, which is quite a lot. And the lower glazes was 109mm thick, effectively. And the sides and rear, like most other tanks, were uh, less well armored. In addition to that, like I said before, they use spaced armor, and this is when you put uh, small armor plates over the main armor so that uh, certain rounds, for example hash rounds, will be less to not effective uh, and will pose less of a threat to you and your crew members. 
Of course, all of this just keeps adding weight. And to power this or to get this to move, you need a pretty good engine. And the engine they used was a Rolls Royce Meteor engine, which could produce up to roughly 810 horsepower. And this allowed the tank to have a top speed of 34 kilometers an hour and have an operational range of 153 kilometers. With a Merib Brown transmission and it had a Hortzman suspension. The Conqueror was also a very large vehicle, which you might expect when you look at one of these pictures. It was 11.5 meters when you include the barrel long. It was 3.4 meters tall and 4 meters wide. This allowed the vehicle to have 4 crew members in there. And of course these crew members were the driver, the gunner, the loader and the commander. The commander was set at the back of the turret, the loader at the left and the gunner at the right. And a 4 man crew is very common for a tank. And a three-man turret is also very common for a tank at the time. In the end, chasing the idea of having a heavy tank with a 120mm fitted on it was not such a weird idea. And the reason why is because the Americans had tried it with the M103. And this was produced 300 times in total. And it stayed over a decade longer in service than the Conqueror did. And the French also tried it with the AMX-50. Uh, this was supposed to be also a heavy tank, but it didn't really get far. It was only produced five times, and all of these five times, it was a prototype. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, because 70 likes within 24 hours would mean that I will post a new video about the Yak Panther, which is a rework in three days. So make sure to try to achieve that like goal. Of course, liking, subscribing and uh, commenting does help my YouTube channel a lot. Uh, in other news, we will be uh, doing a relief fund stream for uh, Syria and Turkey uh, at the beginning of March. So either the 3rd or 4th of March, there will be a charity race where I will attend in as well. And uh, if you're interested in donating money, I will match you guys up to $20 because I don't have a lot of money, but it's still, you know... If you guys donate 20 bucks, I will uh, add 20 bucks myself as well. So we have a, uh, we at least can uh, give one family enough food for an entire week. The money will go to uh, charity Save the Children, at least for my stream. And other than that, thank you very much, VW German Looker and Sander for being members of my channel. And other than that, have a very good day.